Welcome to another episode on the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be detailing the MX-5. Let's get started. I wanted to give myself a little bit of a head start. So last night I washed it really quick with Dawn dish soap. I always do that before I detail a car. That takes off all of the old wax and whatever grease the dealership has thrown on it before I purchased it. And it's really not in bad shape. If we look across the hood, we've got some uh, like water spots, maybe some bird shit marks that have burned into it. And there's a, a decent scratch over here, but really can't, really can't feel it too much with your fingernails. So that should come out pretty nice. And if you can hear that, there's some junk on the paint, so I'm gonna clay bar it before I, uh, before I buff it, get that stuff out. Sides of the car, sides of the car aren't, aren't too bad, so it should just be a quick clay bar. And as you can see, I already cleaned the top, and I want to put um, some fabric uh, water repellent on it, because right now it's, when you, when you hose it down, the water just soaks into it. It doesn't beat up on it. So I'm gonna do that. So I've got the car tented. I figured I would, I'd rather do the top first. That way I can tent the car and I'm not dragging plastic across a freshly detailed car. So I'll spray it down, let it sit for a little bit and, and dry off a little bit. And then I can take the plastic and cover the top so that I don't get any polish or wax or anything on the top. But let's take a look at the supplies I'm gonna be using. So when I cleaned it yesterday, I used this rag top brush. It's very soft, it works really well on fabric tops and some 303 top cleaner. And I'm gonna be using 303 fabric guard on the top in a few minutes. And now that the car is clean, I'm gonna go over it with the clay bar and then I will tent the top with plastic and then I will go around with masking tape and mask off all of the soft rubber parts because the, I don't want those to turn white if I get some polish on them. And then the car is in decent enough shape. I think I will just use this Meguiar's correction compound on a microfiber and then maybe some, I may need some final polish, but I've had really good results with just doing like a one-step correction with this correction compound and then glaze sealing and waxing on top of that. So if I can do that, that'll save a lot of time too. And with the car being as small as it is and not having to do with the top, it should be relatively quick. Should be able to get it done in a day. And then um, if, if the car was in bad shape, then I've got these other levels of polish from very heavy, well, I've named them. So we have very heavy, heavy, moderately heavy, final and then our glaze sealer and wax but i'm gonna do a different wax this time so once you do the glaze and the sealer it has a good shine to it and the wax wears off really fast so i've been using this wax replacement that you foam cannon on the car i've done a few cars with it and it lasts a long time and especially with this car it won't be out in the out in the weather much I'll just be driving it on nice days. So this stuff should last quite a while and it gives a really nice shine and a nice smooth finish on top of a correctly um, polished car. Well, it takes a lot longer to prepare the car than to actually do the treatment, but it says to let it dry. So we'll set it out here in the sun maybe 20 minutes or so until the um, kind of until the wetness dries off and then I'll cover it and push it back into the garage and start working on the rest of the car. All right, the top has dried and I just rolled the plastic back over the top and tucked it well around here. So now I'm gonna go around the car and tape off all of the rubber parts. So like this kind of stuff, cause this will look ugly. It already looks faded so I'll have to do some kind of reconditioning on it to make it black again. But you want to run around all of this stuff. I need to polish this uh, trim piece around the windshield. It's really scratched right in here. So 
right where you would put your hand if you're sitting in the car with the window down and driving. And actually you can almost see some finger marks down at there. So I'll have to polish this out. Uh, so I'm gonna have to tape off all of this trim on the inside and the outside. And then the belt line trim all the way around. The lip spoiler I can polish out. That's, uh, it's either painted. Yeah, that's painted. So I can polish that out. It won't hurt the tail lights. Little piece of tape on there. Around the mirrors, that's soft rubber, so I'll have to do that. And I can polish out the mirror caps by hand, but I still need to tape off this textured plastic here. figured this would be a good place to pause. So I have the whole car tented, taped, and I finished the clay bar. It really wasn't bad. It took me maybe an hour to, to do everything here. And the paint is pretty smooth now. The dealership actually did a decent job on it. There wasn't a lot of junk on the paint. But all of the soft rubber parts have been taped off. Now it would be handy if I had a three inch DA. All I have is a six inch. So three three inch would work really well for going around the trim. So I may have to do I may have to do that by hand or uh, the six inch. If I'm careful, I may be able to do it. And the black trim at the bottom, I'll probably have to do that by hand. But it's really not in a bad bad place to start. Some very light scratches in the trunk. And then the sides. This is a very a very boring gray. There isn't a ton of metallic flake in it. It's, it's more like a dark silver, and the um, uh, silver, silver is a very forgiving color, but that's also kind of a pain if you're detailing because you really don't get any satisfaction out of it. It's like you, you can wash a silver car once every four years through an automatic car wash, and it looks the same as if you hand wash it and polish it religiously, and I think that's kind of what's gonna happen here. I'll get, I should be able to get the scratches and things out of the hood, but it, I doubt it's really gonna be like a, wow, that car looks fantastic. It's just gonna be, yeah, it's a shiny gray car. And when you're detailing a car, you gotta keep in mind how much your time is worth. So for example, I'm probably not gonna do anything with the wheels. The wheels look pretty good as they are and with the, it would probably take me an hour at least per wheel to polish them because of them being multi-spokes. And you're not gonna get, for, for spending at least four hours on the wheels, it's not gonna look like you spent four hours on the wheels. So if, if I get the rest of the car looking good, the wheels look good enough, they're shiny, they're not scratched besides some of the curb marks but it's not worth my time to, to go and do that. So if you have nothing else going on in your life and you want to spend, and you want to spend 30 hours detailing a car, you can, but I just want it to look nice and doing what I'm going to do here, it definitely will look good. It'll look clean. I wanted to start with the worst spot on the hood and that was the scratch over here. So I hit it with the microfiber and the um, heavier polishing compound, the correction compound, and I still couldn't get it out and I could feel it with my fingernail. So I'm gonna try being a little more aggressive with it. So I grabbed some 2000 sandpaper and did a wet sand on it to get it almost all the way out. I don't wanna sand the I don't want to sand the orange peel completely out of the clear because then you'll have a smooth shiny spot here and the rest of the hood you'll see orange peel in it to match the rest of the car. But I've got it probably 99% out and now I'll, I'll have to come back with my um, four levels of polish. I'll probably just do this by hand to polish this area up and hit the whole thing again with the correction compound and the rest of the hood 
and the, we'll see if the correction compound can get out. Like there's a, a, a burn spot here from some bird shit. Hopefully it'll take that out. I really don't want to wet sand any more of the hood than I have to. All right, it came out pretty nice. I ended up just hitting it with the, I hit it with my heavy polish and cutting pad and it didn't really do too much. So I went back to the microfiber and the, um, and the other compound and turned up the speed a little bit and added some more pressure and it, and it came out pretty nice. You can still see, you can still see it a little bit, but it's a deep enough scratch. I really don't want to sand it out any more than it already is. But the, um, the glaze in the sealer, that should hide it. And then once it's outside, it'll definitely be a little better than under the, under the lights in the garage. I'm about four hours in and the polish step is done now. That's by far the most time consuming part. The glaze and the sealer are pretty easy. You just, you do the whole car, let it sit for a few minutes and then buff it off. So those are quick. Uh, the, everything that's painted, everything that's gray painted, I did with the machine. The black trim around the windshield and the mirror caps and then at the, bottom of the rocker panels and the bumpers. Bottom of the bumpers I did by hand with a two-step polish. And they came out pretty nice, with a dust on it. But I think with, um, with some glaze and sealer on those, it'll cover up anything else that's lingering. But it's, it's shining pretty well. I think it'll look nice when it's outside. Again, it's not that exciting of a color. Mazda has some really great colors, uh, like the 2016 MX-5 that I put together a few years ago, it was wrecked. It was so red, and after I polished it out, that car looked fantastic. But one good thing about this car, if you watched the first video on the introduction for the car, it was in a, a minor accident in the front, and pretty much the, the nose of the car has been repainted, and if you're familiar with Mazda paints, the colors are awesome, but the quality is pretty much shit. If you do more than pretty much look at the car, it'll chip and scratch. And luckily, as a good side effect of it being in a small accident and the front of the car being painted, it was painted with better paint than from the factory. The accident was at about, I think it was 9,700 miles and it has 23,000 miles on it now and there are hardly any, there's hardly any damage. There's a few minor chips in the bumper, a few minor chips in the hood, but that's about it. If this was still original paint, it would be, it would just be, it would look like somebody sandblasted the front of it. And the, the 2016 that I rebuilt, it had 30, I think it had 33,000 miles on it. And yeah, the, the hood and the front bumper, it, they were destroyed with 33,000 miles on them. So good side effect of it being in an accident. Um, so let's go ahead and do the glaze sealer. And I should have time today that I can do the foam can and wax on it too, and just finish the whole thing up. And here we are, after a wash, clay bar, polish, glaze sealer, it looks pretty good. Got a nice shine across the hood and the trunk. A couple of deeper scratches didn't come out, but it still looks pretty good. And with the hand polish along the black trim, that came out pretty good too. There's some 
water etching in it. I can't really get that out, but it still looks good. And the trunk came out really nice. And the lip spoiler was pretty scratched. And I was able to hit that with the DA and it polished up really nice. On the sides. So inside the garage it looks good, so I'm sure when I push it outside it'll, it'll look really good. And here's our finished product. Looks pretty good. Can't really see any scratches in it, especially in the flat parts. Looks smooth as glass. So I think it looks as good as it's gonna get. And got it all shined up for its new owner when I'm done with it in a month or two. Now that the exterior is done, if we take a look at the interior, it's in really nice shape. I really don't need to do too much in here. I'm just going to vacuum and clean the floor mats, wipe down the dash and apply some 303, and that's pretty much it. So nothing to see here. So thanks for watching this video. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel to see more updates on various other projects.